you and I. Intro. Uh, well, let's go that way then. You want to intro this, buddy? Yeah, but I don't want to do it in the sun. Tell these people where we is, what we're going to look at. They can see you. Well, here we are. We're in a little town called Sumter. South Carolina, S-U-M-T-E-R, named after a Revolutionary War hero, and uh, we're at uh, uh, a public park here in town Swan called Lake. Swan Lake Irish Gardens. Neat little tidbit is this public park is the only public park in the entire country with all eight different varieties of swans, and it's called Swan Lake Irish Gardens. You can see in the background, uh, you can see some of the swans out there on the lake. We're going to walk around and look at the, uh, the different uh, types of swan here and check out all the other dedications. I don't know how many acres are here. I think it's over a hundred uh, different acres, but um, this was developed over a long period of time with different uh, land tracts being um, um, donated to the city by different people, and it all came together to be Swan Lake and Iris Gardens. We're going to go see what it's all about. So give us a, follow us along. We'll see. I need to take Now throughout these uh, park, they have um, these benches. They have these benches that are dedicated by people. And there are a whole bunch of them all the way around. So this is a really neat park. You can see benches, benches everywhere. Another neat thing is they've got these cute little talking trees. Uh, it's a talking tree path. And so you come up to the little deal. You push it. Hello, I'm the true southern magnolia. Magnolia grandiflora. Grandiflora really tells my story. I have huge, fragrant white blossoms in the springtime. My leaves are glossy and dark green, and I have interesting branches that make great ladders for children to climb. You will find me growing from moist areas in the coastal plains in Texas all the way to North Carolina. And now I grow in people's yards, too, because I'm so beautiful. Even though my leaves are evergreen, they do wear out after about two years, and I get a whole brush of new ones. I'm an ancient and have very unusual seed pods that are related to color. In winter, look for my showy red fruit hanging from slender threads. Some people collect these colors. Bring it away. <laughs> Get out of my AO. <laughs> It's feeding time. Do not dare get near my chunk of food, or I will bite you. Now you can probably see the turtles swimming in the pond in the lake. They probably have tons, I would say hundreds of turtles. They're all over the place. It looks like they play friendly with the swan. Which is a good thing. I can see swan everywhere.
Yeah. You don't want to listen? No, I don't want to hear what they have to say about this tree. Because it talks as though the tree is talking to that little sketchy. <laughs> A little sketchy, eh? Yeah. So, you know let's see if we can right. count the varieties. Of you know those are ducks, right? Well, that's a duck. That's not. The white ones are swans. Yeah, the, the swan. Those are those are swans. That one sitting there with the green bill. Yeah, that's a duck. That's a duck. There's a whole bunch of ducks and geese in here, too. When I see one sleeping, you have to talk softly so he doesn't wake up. But there's the black swans. Yep. And the white swans. Yep. And those with the red bills over there, those are a different kind. Well, yep. no, these have red bills. Let me see this paper here. I bet it tells you what kind of swans there are. Well, that's a big one right there. A big well, those white are one. black swans. <laughs> yep. Yeah, the lady inside talked about black neck swans. Yeah. And they have their own neighborhood. Right, because they're not nice. Oh, check that one over there. Ooh, he, he stuck his head down there really far. Yeah, those are... Check him out. He must be eating something down there. Yeah, those are the mute swans. Mute? Mute. What, the white ones? The white ones with the orange bills and the black around their eyes. Yeah. Like that one right there, it's a mute swan. Okay. This one right here is a mute swan. So they don't talk. I don't know. I don't know if that's why they're called mute swans or not. These ones over here, these white ones over here, those are the Cascaraba. Cascaraba. It's the smallest one. Okay. They're yeah. native to South America. Smallest species weighing an average of 8 to 11 pounds. Mm-hmm. Yeah, okay. And the white ones, solid white ones, are but, the mute swans. Well, no. Oh, they're solid, solid white ones. Look at their faces. You have to look at their faces, see? Yeah, well... Because there's lots of white swans. Well, okay, so the the mute swan is all white with the yellow bill, with the orange bill. Right, and the black eyes. And the black eyes. Okay, like this one. Yeah. This is a mute swan. That's a mute swan. I don't know what it's doing, though. He's grooming. But it's a mute swan. And then the black ones are the black swans. They're from Australia. They're See? native to Australia. Nice. And there must be some kind of mating dance or something. Well, I don't know. <laughs> but those ones over there that are going behind the tree, those are the Bewick swans. Okay. From Russia and Japan. And they're... They have they a long black and yellow bill. Long black and yellow bill. Yeah, you can see them under the trees over there moving away from us. The black neck swans, they're not nice, so they have to go live in their own neighborhood. We'll see them later. Let's see. Alright. What about the gray one with the black and the black neck and the black and white neck? See him right over there? Yeah. You see him over there on the bank right there? Right there. Right there. He's scratching himself. Yeah, that's a black swan. They're, Those are all black swans. They're all gray. Oh, I don't care. They're black swans. They're black swans, okay. Yeah. All black swans. All right. 
Warning, do not leave children unattended. Evidently the swans make take a take a nip too. Oh, that one got goosed. Right. The geese will likely take a bite. Here. I need to put this in your pocket. What's that? My phone. My phone yeah. is dead. Cool. I think that's where you're going to see the black nut swans over uh, there in the yeah. cage because they're not nice. Phone oh, recovery. It represents the right wing of a pintail duck in its recovery stroke. This beam evolved from a wing position that is considered the weakest in bird flight, yet in the artist's eye is the position with the most beauty and grace. All of us are in recovery somewhere in our lives, as is our environment, of which Swan Lake, Swan Lake is a unique part. So there you are, right there. An artist's vision encapsulated in metal. That's all of us. What's up, buddy? What's up, buddy? That is a mute swan. Yeah? Yeah. They don't talk. You could talk to them all day long. They won't respond. I mean, the rest of them probably aren't going to respond either. In that case, they're all mute. But the others do make a noise. Oh, look at the irises. There's still a couple blooming over here. Yeah. Yeah. Now, what I find interesting are these trees. They have <laughs> sort of a, a bulbous bottom end of the trunk. Yeah, it's almost know. like they're sculpted that way. But you can tell by they're the different different shapes even though they all have the same basic character. Hi. The main trunks have little different shapes there at the bottom, so I think that's evidence that they grow that way, but they look well sculpted. Now, earlier today, they were talking about an alligator being down here. Yeah. And we might get to see the alligator. Well, there's plenty of turtles down there. Well... Some folks was talking about an alligator being down here earlier today. Yeah. Did he eat a bird? From what I understand, it just looked at him. So, I, I just really don't know. No telling what you'll see here near the water. All sorts of waterfowl. That have... Could, uh, that have come along. That have caged in, or fenced in. And I'm assuming that they put their wings or something to keep them from flying away. But, <clears throat> there's not a way to keep the other birds from joining. I guess not. This is a happy little bird sanctuary. But this park is neat. And, and it's free. Yep. It's a beautiful little it's habitat a for waterfowl. Oh, now look at this beautiful specimen. Right out there, and a big trunk on it. <laughs> you didn't tell them what specimen to look at. That tree it's right the there. Tree. Yeah, a big old trunk on it. Huge. That's gorgeous. We came from right back there. Ten thousand degrees today, Blaine. Are you trying to move that one? 
Hey, you gonna carry me? No, you to be. And you're younger than I am, remember? But no amount of sweet tea in the world can help this. Ha. See, there's another entrance to this yep. garden off of uh, Garden Street. Aha. Uh -huh. Show me that. All right, and I hear a waterfall. There's this little piece oh, of look. now. See that looks water like a place right for over here. Gator. Yeah, that looks like it'd be real good gator land right in there. Good old gator home. I bet Teresa would love to go swimming up in there. Oh no, I would not. Damn. Let's see what we can see over here. Yeah, there it is. Oh, that's the spillway. And it feeds right into there. Oh look, there's a little boat ramp. I bet it doesn't get used. Observation deck. Yeah, what? that's a boat ramp. But that's not true. Well, let's go observe. No. Turn the sign. I just love those trees. I don't know what they are, but they've got character. I guess there's some kind of pine. I have to brush up on my knowledge of trees. Those are trumpeter swans, the white ones. Trumpeters! They're either trumpeters or, or uh, they could be whistling. I'd have to see their eyes. No, yeah. those are trumpeters. Uh huh. The trumpeters, you can tell the difference. The whistlers have a yellow mark right below their eye on their bill, but these are solid black. Okay, well, there's that one right there. He's got yellow on his bill. If he's got yellow. Right, that's a. Um, Can't see his it's because he's burying it in his belly. Right. And there's the one dude impress, trying to impress us with standing on one leg. Hey, look at me. See how coordinated I am? That's a whooper. The oh. one with the yellow on his bill is a whooper. He's a whooper? Uh -huh. Well, that whooper is standing on one leg. Yeah. Now, these are the guys with bad attitude. Now, the black neck swan, they said, has their own neighborhood. They put them in a cage because they're territorial and they will attack the other swans. So, even though they're smaller, they're smaller, but they are aggressive and territorial. So they got their own little hut, their own little town all to themselves right here. 
a little bit of water. That way they don't jack with everybody else. Oh, we can go in and observe them. The black neck swan and the whistler tundra swan. As long as we shut the gate, you got to shut that gate so they don't get loose. The most common swan in the U.S. is the whistling swan. It's also known as the tundra swan. And you can see one right down there. He is scratching an itch on his belly, on his underside, with his beak. Average weight of the females 13 and a half pounds and males are 15 and a half. And of course they love the North American tundra. For some reason, they also uh, like China. They're bred over there. And of course, the black necked swan migrates to the northern hemisphere after breeding in the southern third of South America and the Falkland Islands. Loves the Falkland Island area. Those down there usually don't migrate. The female swan lays from four to eight cream-colored eggs and incubates for 36 days. Average weight is 9 to 12 pounds. There you have it, folks. Geogra National Geographic can't beat this. Right. Well, I guess they can, but not for free. <laughs> to me, they don't let me see them in person. And they have a butterfly garden. Remember, you got to close that gate. you got to keep those bad boys in. they got a little butterfly garden. So... Right. You're feeling particularly 60-ish. You can go play in the butterfly garden oh. with your tie-dye t-shirt. Go that way. The woman changes her mind. You need to ask. And we're coming upon a bridge. Another bridge. This is a covered bridge. And a little stream coming off of the lake, flowing under it. Well, it's not really flowing. Oh, man. But, you know. I think it's an overflow area for the lake. Yeah, I would imagine, yeah. Nice little overflow area. Camellia Island was created in 1989 as part of the repairs necessitated by Hurricane Hugo. The island features mature specimens of Camellia japonica planted in the 1940s. Nice. Beautiful area here, beautiful area. You want to go that way? I don't know where that goes. It's not the yellow brick road, I can tell you that. So we got an alligator. We were talking about it earlier. Thanks, girls. Right there, swimming in Swan Lake. He's just a baby. He's maybe two years old. Yeah, he's not a big one. His snout 
short, which means his body is short. Yeah. Which means he's a baby. But there he is. There's an alligator. Yeah, look at that. All right, folks. Remember to like us, share us, and don't forget to hit that subscribe button. See you later.